Nowadays, if you want to play a video game, it means shelling out 60 bucks online or in store. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, you could just turn on your radio to get a brand new video game sent to your computer. This may seem like a fairly advanced capability for a time before Wi-Fi, but thanks to the ways that early computers were designed, it was commonplace. To understand how this was possible, we need to step back into the groovy 1970s. In 1977, the world's first microprocessor-driven PCs were released. These were the Apple II, the Commodore PET, and the TRS-80. All of these machines had one thing in common. They used audio cassettes for storage. Hard drives at the time were still quite expensive, and everyone at the time had access to cheap audio cassettes. Early computer designers actually flaunted cassette storage as it aided in the early adoption of personal computers. As PCs became more common, so too did the emergence of their use as video game machines. As the 1980s rolled around, engineers at the Netherlandse Omroep Stichting, or NOS, a Dutch broadcasting organization, realized something incredible. Since computer programs and video games were stored on audio cassettes, it meant that their data could be transmitted with ease over the radio. They started taking programs and video games and setting up broadcasts where people could download games onto their own personal computer. The audio that was transmitted would have sounded reminiscent of a dial-up modem booting up. Prepare yourself for some screeching and hissing, because this is what it would have sounded like on a public radio station. NOS started a radio program specifically for transmitting gaming data called HobbyScoop, and it became incredibly popular. The company even created a standard cassette format called Basic Code to ensure computer compatibility. Eventually, transmitting games through computers became so popular that radio shows popped up all around the world. A Yugoslavic station called Ventilator 202 broadcasted 150 programs between 1983 and 1986. As the practice evolved, it became less of a novelty and rather a practical way for people to share calculation programs, educational tools, encyclopedias, and even flight simulators. Looking back to the start of these radio transmissions, the radio host Zoran Modli was tasked with informing Radio Belgrade technicians that only hissing and growling would be heard for the next several minutes, a perplexing statement to anyone outside of the know of what was going on. Radio West's first broadcast in the UK was a 40 pixel by 80 pixel black and white image of Charlie's Angel star Cheryl Ladd. This eventually turned into a show called Datarama that made video game transmissions regular to the airwaves. This futuristic and intriguing process of data transfer eventually came to an end in the late 1980s as 16-bit computing became common. Processors for these computers were much faster and thus required much more storage capability, 250 times that of previous computers. This meant that cassette storage was no longer feasible and manufacturers would start using floppy disks and hard drives for computer mass storage. As transmitting video games over the airwaves died out, so too did any major wireless transmission of data. People had no widely used way to transmit game data wirelessly until the invention of Wi-Fi in 1991. So, turning on the radio in the early 1980s meant you were either met with songs from David Bowie, The Police, Def Leppard, or ear-numbing screeching and beeping. <laughs> 